Feel free to, dude, you know, subscribe to the channel, dude, because we're chilling over here, and uh, the more the merrier. You want to meet my dog? He just came in. Hi, buddy. Yo, I'm Ryan. Welcome to the channel. So in this one, I'm going to go over um, the workflow I made to create the visualizer you saw at the beginning of the video. By the end of this, I hope you have a deeper understanding of how to utilize these uh, music visualizer nodes that I've introduced to Comfy UI. For more information on my node suite, which includes not only these visualizers, but hundreds of other audio reactive nodes, check out the GitHub where you can find this workflow. You'll also be able to find this workflow on my Civit AI profile with all of the attendant assets that I used included to reduce the amount of uh, work for you to give the workflow a try. Let's start at the beginning. We load our audio. We separate our audio into its component parts. And there's a, a separate tutorial on my channel for using the audio manipulation notes. I'll link that in the description. And I've set up all of these variables here, but we're not using them all. I just did this to make it easy to swap them out later. So instead of using the drums, you know, we could use something else there very easily. So I've set variables for all of the different uh, pieces of the song and I've set variables for all the basic features. So the features are what makes things audio reactive. So these, these are music visualizers, but you can make the visualizers actually react to audio dynamically in addition to just visualizing it. You can, a better way to say it is you can manipulate the visualization with additional audio reactivity. And this is with the flex feature system. Also in my node suite, I will link the tutorial for these down below. But instead of audio, we could use any other feature like motion, proximity, depth, color, brightness, time, etc. It sounds complicated, but um, it's not so bad. So we've got these uh, features extracted from the audio. And here's another, uh, here's an example. I'm also using a time feature. So we're creating a feature that changes value over time. That's, that's all, all this is. So let's start. I've grouped the, vi these are six visualizers here because they simply make a, a circle or a line. So I wanted to have multiple circles. So these are six visualizers. And then we take all six of them and composite them together. And that's how you end up with, with these. So this is three of them right here. But I, I digress. Okay, so we're, we're using our audio and uh, the drum feature and the drums are modulating the rotation. So, oh, this isn't just drums. This is a drum feature accumulate. So this is um, a, a node uh, feature mod accumulate. So it just accumulates the, the drums. <laughs> normalizing it over. It's difficult to describe, but you can see that with each hit of the drums, it goes up a little bit until it eventually gets to one. And since I've set it to decumulate, I'm not even sure that's a word, but once it gets to one, it does the same thing, but in reverse. And it does it over this window of 110 frames. So it climbs up for 110 frames and then climbs down for 110 and then repeats the process. And that's what gives, and since I've linked it to rotation here, that's why we get this. You see it's, it circles around according to the drums and then after about 110 frames, it starts circling backwards and repeats. So that's how we get the rotation. <clears throat> and you can check out the individual settings of these uh, in the help menu. You can get a little bit more information. It, it'll be too tedious for me to go over them, them here. But the, the important thing is that we're using the feature that we created over, over there to modulate the rotation. And you could change it from rotation to any of these. Uh, yeah, so basically we're doing the same thing with, with uh, two of these but I've shrunk one of them and that's how we get this double. And then the third one, I'm just using an empty, empty audio so I can just have a circle because I just 
I don't know why, but I wanted to circle there. Okay, next, let's look at the dots that go in the middle. So this I made by accident, um, just messing around with the number of points. So again, we're using the base in this case to modulate the number of points. And this is with the bar visualization method. Um, so it, it, yeah, it, it, I'm using really weird settings here, but normally it's just, uh, it, it looks a lot different here. Let me edit, uh, I'll, I'll show you one second. Okay, so I quickly set up a standalone a circular visualizer to show you what it normally looks like with the with the bars visualization method, and this is it. So you can change the number of bars, the length of the bars, the sharpness of the bars, yada yada yada. And the reason I'm I'm doing something kind of weird here, the reason we get dots instead of bars is because like with the one above it, I'm using no I'm using an empty bit of audio. It's just silence and then modulating the number of points, or so the number of bars. So these bars that never grow in length, just grow in number. And that's how we get that sort of effect according to the base. <clears throat> I've also set the, to just to further complicate things, I wanted the dots to sort of swirl around. And I did that, I didn't want them necessarily to be audio reactive. I tried it and it was a little bit much. So I'm using, that's what I'm using these time features for, is to just, oh, and with the pulse setting here, it's just like a sine wave um, with, and I've adjusted the speed for the, so they, they don't just rotate all at the same time. I've adjusted the speed and the offset because I'm using this for the each, these, I'm using these respectively here to the, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so that's what, Get rid of this and I'm using that time feature taking the mask of the audio visualizer and rotating it according to the time feature and then we composite them all together to get the dots all all three sets of dots spinning at irregular times we composite them together and then to get that trail effect after the dots I'm using this optical flow mask modulation also uh, available in my node suite. So that's what gives us the trails. We went over how to get the spinning. We went over how wh how to get the dots. So this is the, the final output. I think I already showed you. Anyways, we've got our circles, we've got our dots, and then finally we composite both of those together to our final visualizer input. Uh, and then we just we just continue to complicate things. So to get <laughs> to get that jiggle effect that you see right here, we use this um, a couple of things. So I've just created a, a mask of a circle in the center of the image. It's just a plain white mask of the circle. And then I've used the depth shape modifier to turn the circle into a shade, it, like to give it depth. So it made the circle into a sphere. And then I've repeated that since we've only got one, I've repeated that image by our total number of frames. And then using this depth warp node, we can take this and use it as a depth map and warp the, I put an image on top of it and warp that image according to the depth map. And of course, make it audio reactive. So uh, what did I use for a feature here? It looks like I used the vocals, the vocal feature. So we're now warping our audio visualizer according to the vocals. And that's what gives you this cool effect. All right, oh, <clears throat> this, is, this is what I had planned to use as a depth map. I'm not sure it's quite there yet. So this is the input for the K sampler and you can get wow you, i i left this running so you can get cool stuff like this these are three examples of using that visualizer as input with like different loras and denoise settings so here's a lava one kind of reminds me of a car tire that's on fire which is cool I, I really like the galaxy looking thing in the center. I almost wish that we didn't modulate the number of points and just had the dots swirling. Um, 
instead. And here's a slime one. I always use slime. And the, all three of these are Ralfinger Loras here. Um, I'm not going to go over this setup. I, I'll include it in the uh, the workflow that I'm posting. But uh, I've gone over this a hundred times. There's there's several other audio visualizer node uh, node tutorials um, that I encourage you to check out if you need some more information on what's going on here. But it's just a basic animate diff setup. All right, so that was a lot, sounded a lot more complicated than I had planned, but I, I hope it serves um, its purpose and shows you how powerful this stuff can be and how granular you can get with your audio visualizers using these nodes. Uh, if you have any questions, or if you think that I could have done this a little bit differently, let me know down in the comments. Feel free to, dude, you know, subscribe to the channel, dude, because we're chilling over here, and uh, the more the merrier. You want to meet my dog? He just came in. Hi, buddy. Here he is. Here he is, everybody. Is that your buddy? <laughs> All right, that's my dog. Anyways, that's going to conclude this video. Uh, I'm going to terminate the session now.